Alright, welcome to the Grob Chess Club, grob.2u.com. We are continuing our lecture series, moving up to Class E, and this is Part 2 of Lesson 5 on how to begin your endgame play. Uh, we just talked about how to queen a pawn, uh, if you have one pawn, uh, and if you're black, how to draw certain endgames like that. So Now we're going to talk about uh, counting out whether you're going to be able to queen your pawn, and little tricks to make it easier for you. Uh, let's say in this position, uh, your opponent, Black, just offered you a draw, and it's your move, and you don't know whether or not you're going to be able to queen that pawn. Uh, one thing you can do is you can sit there and try to count out in your head um, whether that pawn is going to make it to the end or not, uh, which can be very difficult, especially for beginners. You, you're not as accustomed to, to picturing these things in your head. So you could try to picture all of this in your head. and it turns out you are going to make a queen and then you're going to win the game but are you really going to be able to picture all that in your head uh... well i'm going to tell you right now you don't have to there's little tricks you can do to make it much much easier for you so let's say in this position it's uh... white to move uh... what he can do is he can draw a a box if you will from the the square he's on let's say this black one ah, go back to that square yes all right, and we're going to go to the end of the board where we're going to queen. We're going to queen on this rank, and then we're going to make a uh, this line right here. We're going to imagine a line from where we're at, a, uh, a diagonal line all the way to the end. Well, where we were, and then we're going to go down, and then we have this box right here. From here, here, we're going to make a triangle with these three dark squares, from where we're at to a, uh, a square at the end and then you know across from where we are right now so here here and here and we notice that if the uh, black king is not in that triangle then he is not going to be able to cap uh... he's not going to be able to stop our pawn um, so let's get a different position to help you picture it a little better okay let's say right here it is black's move and then white just offered black um, well let's say um, you don't know if you're going to be able to stop that pawn or not. Well, you can either give up now, which is never a good idea, or you can count uh, you can count things out, which is difficult, as we said before, or we can pull, uh, look at our little trick. This white pawn is on a dark square. We go to this dark square at the end, and this right here. And since it's our move, we notice that we're going to be able to step inside that triangle. So now we are inside that triangle, which means we are going to be able to stop that pawn. So let's see. Now the triangle is from this square to the white square at the end to, I guess it would be this square right here. And we can step inside again. And now we notice a new triangle from here, here to here. And the point is we're always going to be able to step inside that triangle. And if we could step inside that triangle, we're going to be able to catch that pawn and he can never queen. So let's say instead of this position, it's the, uh, let's say it's white's turn to move. Uh, then the game is going to be one for white. The point is that black is outside of the triangle, and then no matter how hard he tries, he's not going to be able to make it inside the new triangle. The new triangle is here. He is two spaces away from getting in that triangle. Say if he were here, then he could step here, and then like like before, he's going to be able to stop the pawn. But now he doesn't have enough moves. And you'll see it always works. He's he's two steps away from the triangle. Let's say he tries again, then it just doesn't work for him, and then white's going to be able to queen his pawn. So it's getting in that triangle of, of influence that's going to be able to help you out. Alright, next we're going to look at a position where white is two pawns up, and these pawns, uh, one of them protects the other. And in this position, it doesn't matter whose move it is, white is going to win this game. Um, because uh, no matter how you know close black is to my pawns, he's not going to be able to get both of them. Um, you might be saying, well, he can just take this pawn right here, and then when this pawn runs up, he can chase it, and then he can take it. But the point is that once he takes this pawn, let's say he tries to take this pawn, we're going to be able to run this pawn, and now the king, is not, he's, he's too far behind. He's always going to be one space too far, and we're going to be able to queen. So white sets even like a little bit of a trap here, in that if black takes this pawn, he's going to be able to queen this. So let's say he instead moves in front of this pawn. Well, then we can just move our king over to that side of the board. And then once our king is over to the side of the board, our king's going to be able to assist one of the two pawns. And then the game's going to be a win. So if you have connected past pawns, um, 
be aware that if the king tries to take one of them, that you're always going to be able to run that other one off the board, make a queen, and then have the game be over. And a lot of opponents, even like after they take that pawn and you move this pawn, they'll like try chasing after it, like they're going to be able to, uh, you know, do two moves at once and you know somehow catch it. But it's never going to happen, obviously. So, all right, and finally we're going to look at ways to win the game um, by creating a pawn, uh, a passed pawn. A passed pawn is one that's uh, outside the influence from the opposing pawn, so that he can just run up the board uh, without being touched. So. In this position, uh, you might try, you know, moving your king to the side and things like that. But there's a much easier, to w easier way to win here. And that move, if it, if you have this exact position, or there's there's ones like it, uh, so pay attention. So all we have to do is we have to push this pawn here. And you might be saying, well, that's kind of silly. He can take it with either one of the pawns. So then a lot of people will, you know, take back, and then you know they'll just take back. But that is a very bad thing to do. Uh, then you might actually even lose the game. Instead, the trick move, after you push this pawn and he takes, doesn't matter which one he takes with, if he takes with this one, all we're going to do is we're going to distract one of the pawns so that the other one can run up the board. And how we're going to do that, instead of taking back here, we push. You might be saying, well, that's crazy. We're giving up two pawns. He's going to have three pawns. We have one. You know, the game is lost. But the point is here that white is much closer to queen than black. Uh, so let's say black here. Uh, yeah, he could take this pawn over here, but he can't because then we're going to take in, we're going to queen the next move, and the game's over. You're saying, well, what if he just takes that pawn we just put there? Well, the point of a pawn push was so that our pawn here couldn't be attacked here. So now he runs at the board, and nothing can touch him. So let's look at that again. We push up the middle. And he can't ignore either. That's a, another thing to note. He can't just ignore this pawn because then we'll take either this pawn or this pawn and then we'll queen on the next move. So he has to take. Uh, let's say he takes with the other one though, just to show you people out there. Now, you don't want to do the same move by pushing here because then he can just take and, well, what are you going to do? Now he's stopped. Instead, you got to do it with the other pawn. You'll have to picture a lot of this in your head if, you, if you're not used to it. It's good to play this out so that you get used to it and you won't have to think too hard about it, but um, you, you got to be careful. Make sure that you do the right move. Here, instead, the right move is to push here. And again, he can't take this pawn because then we'll just take this one and we'll queen. And then if he does take this one, which you're trying to distract this pawn and make him do that, then we can just run this pawn off the board. And then now he's, let's say, black, you know, even doesn't believe that you know white's gonna be able to win now we got a queen and you're like oh you know but it doesn't matter because he's way too far away to queen we're gonna be able to win both of black's pawns and then we're gonna be able to checkmate him in very few moves so all right well i hope you've learned some basic things about uh king and pawn end games uh, about how to create past pawns and how to win the one ones draw some of the drawn ones uh, you're not going to be able to learn everything from this one. Uh, you might need to get a book or you know, just play a lot of games. Um, playing through games can be remarkably helpful. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and part one of this lecture. And I hope you join us for lesson six, I think it is, uh, where we're going to be talking about some more things. Um, join us next time. Thank you. Bye.